Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. On May 25th, 1977, an entire galaxy was discovered when George Lucas released the original Star Wars film. Now, 41 years later, that franchise comes full circle with the release of Solo, a Star Wars story. In honor of 41 years of Han Solo shenanigans, we give you guys 41 essential Han Solo facts. A lot of famous actors were approached for the original Han Solo character, including Al Pacino, Sylvester Stallone, Kurt Russell, Christopher Walken, Burt Reynolds, Nick Nolte, Chevy Chase, James Caan, and Tom Selleck. A lot of famous actors were also approached for the new Han Solo role, including Rami Malek, Dave Franco, Miles Teller, Ansel Elgert, Aaron Taylor Johnson, and Logan Lerman. Harrison Ford was originally hired by George Lucas to help read lines with other actors who were auditioning. He did such a good job that he actually got the job of Han Solo. Harrison Ford was critical in shaping Han Solo as a character, although eventually Ford and Lucas would have creative differences about which direction the character would go in. Harrison Ford famously wanted the smuggler to die in Return of the Jedi. Hey, you awake? Yeah, I just got a funny feeling, like I'm not going to see her again. <laughs> Despite distancing himself from the role of Han Solo, Harrison Ford actually secretly mentored Alden Ehrenreich on how to approach the character in Solo A Star Wars Story. Get out of my chair. <laughs> Get out of my life. <laughs> Hi. Han is an orphan from Corelli in both Legends and Canon. His rough childhood on the streets was probably a key factor in why he has trust and commitment issues. Oki named Dulana was the closest thing he had to a mother. She eventually gave her life for him in order to help him escape a gang he was in. That's why Han Solo has always liked Wookiees. In Legends, Dulana is also the one who finds out Han's last name is Solo. In canon, Solo was just the made-up surname given to Han by an Imperial officer. Either way, it suits Han and his loner mentality. In Legends, the Solo name is famous and infamous on Corellia. Some of the earliest pioneers on the planet were Solos. So were some of the most notorious pirates and bandits. Before Han was a smuggler and war hero, he was a child beggar who eventually graduated to pickpocketing and then eventually became a full-on thief. When Han got older, he would be involved in several long-term cons that involved him tricking wealthy Corellians into investing in fraudulent asteroid mining schemes. Han was at one time the swoop racing champion of Corellia. Swoop racing is kind of similar to pod racing and just as dangerous, but done on swoop bikes. In Legends, Han's dream was to leave a life of crime behind and become an Imperial pilot. Han would eventually make it to the Imperial Academy and took his training very seriously and graduated at the top of his class. On one mission, Han is told by a superior officer to skin a Wookiee. Han refuses to do so and that would set off a chain of events that led to his dishonorable discharge from the Empire. That Wookiee was named Chewbacca and he ended up owing Han a life debt. Han's pants were really special. They had Corellian blood stripes on them, which were only given to heroes. Yellow stripes were second class, red stripes were first class, and almost always given posthumously. Before Han or Lando got their hands on the Millennium Falcon, it served as an intergalactic forklift. The front of the ship was designed to slot into cargo containers. This is also why the cockpit is on the side of the ship. In Legends, Han actually teaches Lando how to fly his first starship by using the Millennium Falcon, which Lando had just recently won in a Sawbuck game. Believe it or not, Han was actually Jabba the Hutt's favorite pilot, mainly because he was the fastest and never lost a shipment. Fast ship. You've never heard of the Millennium Falcon? Should I have? It's a ship that made the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs. A parsec is actually a measurement of distance, not time. 3.26 light years to be exact. The Kessel Run was located near the center of the galaxy and full of dangerous black holes and nebulas. It took the average ship 18 parsecs to fly through it. Han's famous Kessel Run in 12 parsecs was the result of a botched smuggling run that led to several Imperial picket ships chasing the Millennium Falcon. He was able to shorten the distance of the run by cutting dangerously close to black holes and other gravity anomalies. Despite evading the authorities during the Kessel Run, Han lost a huge shipment of spice, which really pissed off Jabba, and is the main reason the Hut has a bounty on him throughout the entire trilogy. Yes, he's alive. And in perfect hibernation. He's all yours, bounty hunter. Reset the While Han was reluctant to risk his neck for anyone, Chewbacca was always eager to help out people in need. 
He had been a resistance fighter since the Clone Wars on Kaishik and was always urging Han to fight against the Empire. As a matter of fact, the reason why Han returns during the Battle of Yavin is mainly because of Chewbacca. By the Battle of Yavin, Han's bounty increased from 50,000 credits to over 200,000 credits. This was mainly because Han decided to stay and help the rebels at Yavin. Shortly after the Battle of Yavin, Han was involved in an attack on Simon 1. He tried to kill Darth Vader with an ATAT. This little stunt landed him on the Empire's Most Wanted. Before Leia, Han had several different relationships with different women, including Sana Staros, who occasionally pretended to be Han's wife. This led to a very awkward meeting between Han, Leia, and Sana. One time during an attempt to rescue Luke from Hut Palace, Han's blaster was disabled by an EMP blast, so instead he used the lightsaber, and he did a really good job in combat with it. Han never really liked droids, but that wasn't exactly uncommon in the Star Wars galaxy. The Separatist droid army had created such a terrible image for droids during the Clone Wars, so there was still plenty of anti-droid sentiment throughout the galaxy. Should be interesting to see Han interact with Lando's droid L337, a known droid rights activist. For a short period of time, Han actually tried to teach Luke how to become a smuggler, but the Tatooine farmer did a terrible job fighting contracts, and the two ended up hauling a herd of Banthas, something the Falcon was ill-equipped to do. Lando Calrissian had a good reason for portraying Han Solo on Bespin. You see, a long time ago, Han had recruited Lando for a daring Rebel Alliance raid on a Hut Spice World. In exchange for saving some slaves, Lando was promised a large haul of spice. Unfortunately, the Rebel Alliance betrayed the smugglers and took all the spice for themselves. Lando never really forgave Han for involving him in the operation and even suspects that Han was on the take. This is also Legends material. I had no choice. They arrived right before you did. I'm sorry. Han wasn't exactly happy with the New Republic after the Rebel Alliance had defeated the Empire. They failed to free the Wookiee world of Kashyyyk. Han would dedicate himself to freeing Chewbacca's home in the latter years of the war. Han eventually settled down with Leia and they had Kylo Ren, but from the beginning Han felt uneasy being domesticated and had some serious concerns about being a good father. While Leia returned to the world of politics, Han began racing again and would eventually start his own tournament and events. He would even go on to manage the famous Five Sabres race, which was held in five different stages, starting in atmosphere and eventually making it to hyperspace. Han would go on to later make a fortune in the shipping business. This time, everything would be legit, of course. Han Solo, you are a dead man. Well, Atique, what's the problem? The problem is we loaned you 50,000. Because both Han and Princess Leia were quite busy, Ben would rarely see his parents in his teen years, but he also was busy himself training under Uncle Luke. Eventually, it was revealed that Leia and Ben Solo were related to Darth Vader, and overnight the two became pariahs. This was one of the catalysts that led to Ben turning to the dark side. Unable to deal with the situation, Han and Leia would separate. Han would return to Chewbacca, and together they would roam the galaxy doing what they did best, smuggling. Chewie, we're home. Han Solo was originally supposed to appear in Episode 3 as a small child raised by Wookiees on the planet of Kashyyyk. This was quite different from the childhood that was described in the Han Solo trilogy, which is what the new Solo film is loosely based off of. In Legends, after the Battle of Endor, Han Solo would have a much happier life and several kids with Leia. They had twins who would be called Jason and Jaina and a younger boy called Anakin. Looking to the future, Alden Ehrenreich has signed on to portray Solo at least two more times. That could mean a Solo trilogy or possibly other Star Wars movies set around the Galactic Civil War period. Well, there you have it guys, 41 facts about my favorite Star Wars character. Because the best heroes are the ones that aren't actually trying to be heroes. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and like us on Facebook. Also, stay tuned for more awesome Solo content. Thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.